Hi, I'm Corey Wayne, and today we're talking about student loan debt forgiveness, which has been in the news a lot because one of the things that Joe Biden ran on was forgiving student loan debt. And something that I've always thought was unfair was that if somebody's become bankrupt, that's like the one thing they can't discharge through bankruptcy is student debt. If you didn't pay your taxes on time, and as long as you filed or pay, didn't pay your taxes at all, as long as you filed, I think for four or five years ago, you're able to write off your IRS tax debt as well, meaning you don't have to pay it. But if you borrow a bunch of money to go to school, no matter what, it follows you forever. I mean, personally, I'd like to see an amendment that's retroactive. So anybody that went through a bankruptcy and was forced to continue paying on that student loan debt, especially if it was for a garbage degree, which a lot of people are getting garbage degrees that they can't even get a decent job paying a decent living to pay them back, those should be wiped out and they should be wiped out. So if you had a bankruptcy 10 years ago and you've been paying on your student loan debt ever since then, I believe you should get a check back for what you've been paying and make it retroactive. And if somebody just hasn't been paying on it, even though they had a bankruptcy, it should all be wiped out. That's the right thing to do. That's the fair thing to do. But on the flip side, you got people arguing that because it doesn't just get expunged. What typically happens is the federal government steps in, gives the bank their money for the losses, and then that just becomes part of the debt. And so you got people who are saying, hey, as a taxpayer, why am I, I didn't even go to school or I went to school and paid my way through school or, or my family paid. So why am I basically getting taxed to pay for other people, which totally makes sense. I don't want to pay for people who didn't pay their student loan debt. And so one of his big promises, Biden's promises was that he was going to forgive, he was going to have student loan forgiveness. And as we've been hearing over the last six months, they keep moving the goalposts because it really sounds like he knew he didn't have the support and wasn't going to do it anyways. It was just a nice campaign promise and he really didn't mean it. And so all they really did, they keep doing is like kicking the can down the road saying, hey, we're deferring student loan payments. Now they've deferred it through, was it May of 2022, whereas just a few weeks ago, they said that, well, when uh, when it expires, you're gonna have to start paying your loans again. Everybody freaked out about it. So his solution is just to kick it down the road and because he knows they're, they're probably not gonna get any student loan forgiveness because you got people on both sides who are saying, hey, I paid my student loan debt and I paid all the interest and I paid it all off. I worked a second job. Mine didn't get forgiven. Why should this guy get forgiven? And then the federal government takes on that debt in essence. And then it gets charged to me as a taxpayer. So not only did I pay my own loans, I'm paying for somebody else's loans that didn't pay. With the whole pandemic, I think our economy hasn't been doing well. I think that's why Biden is trying to extend it. Of course, is failing to forgive the loans. It's a lot of loans we're talking about. We're talking about millions of people, students. That billions been, and billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. It's 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 tough, but... We would have to like be positive and see what happens these next few months. I think it's just keeping an eye on the media, keeping an eye on President Biden to see what he's trying to do. But he scammed everybody. He didn't mean what he said. They knew they didn't have the votes to get that done. He just made a bunch of promises because he wanted votes. We'll get rid of the evil orange man. We'll get rid of the orange Cheeto and the adults will be back in charge. But he didn't mean any of that, what he said. It's difficult to try to get support on on trying to forgive the loans. But, I mean, he's trying, you can say, but he's tried his best. I think he's trying a little more. He knew all along he wasn't going to get that passed. He was full of it. Yeah, but all that really does is delay, in other words, push off people having to pay it back. Correct. So there's still there's not going to be debt forgiveness. And what's her name? AOC and the, the squad, if you will. Are all I mean they're still complaining about it. I think even Bernie Sanders is complaining about mm -hmm. it. But it's been trending on Twitter, the hashtag cancel student debt. I think a lot of students they were happy the fact that it was extended, but they're trying to have that cancel. There's students that want that cancel. But then you have that part where other students in the past 
paid for the loans and they're not agreeing with the students now that they're trying to cancel it. So what I, I found interesting was the um, a lot of people have suggested on, on the right that they should seize the endowments because these you know big universities have billions and billions of dollars in endowments. People are saying, why don't we just seize the endowments and use that to pay off all these student loans? Is that fair for the universities to have billions and billions of dollars in the coffers? And on top of that, the federal government's going to come in and, and write them a check to pay off all to pay for these people's loans or to the banks that made them in the first place or give a check to the student and then they use that check to pay the loan off. Mm, it's good. I mean, at the same time, college tuition has been increasing over the years. It's very expensive. The reason it's college. gone up or it's inflated the, the value is because you have all this free money that's being printed. And so you got all these online universities that are giving out degrees. And you, know, you hear a lot of these um, people getting these degree programs and going multi, multi hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And they, they get out of school and they make more money waiting tables than they would working in their field. And that's part of the problem is like anything, whether it's real estate or any kind of an asset, when you have a lot of cash chasing a finite supply of assets, the value of that asset is gonna go through, it's supply and demand. So if you've got more money chasing, in this case, degrees, then what happens is they keep giving raises to the professors and the people on staff that run the universities and the cost of education just continues to go up. I mean, I remember when I was in school 20, 25 years ago, I was 10 in bar making between five and 700 bucks a week. And this is in the early nineties. And because I was in state tuition, I went to FIU. I remember my, each one of my classes was only like a few hundred bucks. I don't, I don't know what it is now, but I know it's in the thousands and it's not like they're given, you're getting more value. I mean, these days you can actually, you can learn more on YouTube in a, a lot of cases than you're going to learn going to school and taking a class from somebody that's oftentimes not a very good professor. I definitely agree with you. With my experience in college, I mean, there were classes that I could have just been home studying on my own. And especially when it comes to like media, all these editing programs, like, yes, you can come in school and learn, but there's classes online that teach you how to edit in Adobe After Effects, Adobe um, Premiere Pro. I look on YouTube and I look for different tricks and tips of how to do stuff. Like it's crazy how the world with technology and the internet, you can learn anything. Yep. So that's one big thing that I do agree with that. We can learn things instead of school. So this is interesting. In 1977, $20,000 for tuition, when you look at the inflation, is now equal to $305,304.91 in 2021 dollars. That's insane. That's what happens when you're, you're printing money and you're just giving it to anybody that, I mean, there's really no income qualification or anything. It's easier to get a student loan debt and you can never discharge it versus getting a loan for a car or anything else where you gotta prove your income. And so when you look at that, they're just, a lot of people are taking out student loans and getting degrees because everybody said, oh, you should go to college and get a degree. And they're thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna go to college and get a degree and it's gonna make my life better. And they don't really think through, because obviously I do a lot of this in my phone sessions that I have with clients. I've done countless phone sessions over, over the years with people that are in degree programs and they're oftentimes they're in the degree just because the parents told them to go into that particular degree program. And so they're doing it to please the parents, but yet they got no passion for it or they're just going to school for the heck of it. I was like, okay, so when you get your degree, what's the job you're going to get and what's it going to pay? And like my degree was a, a degree in engineering, which was helpful. And I think back at the time it, it basically started out 10 grand, a year more in income versus somebody that didn't go to school, didn't get a degree in engineering like I did. So you can still make it up the ladder, but you, you make more money because you had a degree. And so if, if you're gonna go to school and get a college degree for something, it better be something that's gonna pay you good money 
to make it easy to pay that loan mm -hmm. off. And a lot of people are just are not thinking that through. They just go and get a degree and then figure when they, they graduate, people will be beating a path to their door. Oh, please come, come work for me. But the interesting thing that I've noticed over the years, having hired and fired hundreds of people in my business career, working for others and working for myself, is that if, if I compare people that went through and got a college degree versus somebody that j just graduated with high school or maybe had an AA or whatever, is the people that went and actually got a degree, a four-year degree, kind of like what you did, they're more reliable, they're more driven, they're more self-motivated, they're more dependable. So like when I compare the two different types of employees, people that go to college tend to be better employees than somebody that just graduated with a high school degree or a couple of years of college and never finished. It just shows it's part like character or their what they're predisposed to do. And somebody that's willing to go through those classes and all those years and spend that money is somebody that's serious and they're more determined. And they typically turn out to be much better employees than somebody that didn't go to school. So from an employer perspective, I like people that went to school or that are going to school because it shows that, because it, it's a lot of work. It's a big time commitment. Obviously it's a big monetary commitment as well. I do agree. College is no joke. But if it's and it's not going to enable you to make a, a lot of money or way more money than if you didn't have a degree at all, it's kind of pointless to, to get a degree. And a lot of people just are not thinking that through because the money is so easy to get. It's like there's literally no qualifications for it other than you, you want, in essence, you want the loan and they give it to you, but you're on the hook for the rest of your life and you can't get rid of it. It will follow you everywhere. And I've read a lot of reports over the years of kids getting demoralized when they realize that they, they're not going to be able to pay that loan back and what their employment prospects are, they're, they're committing suicide. And that's unconscionable to have our kids graduating or almost graduating and then committing suicide because they're overwhelmed by the thought of having to pay this debt off that they don't really see there's any way that they could pay it off because of the skills. Because as I often say, it's like you get paid based on the know. value that you bring to the marketplace. And so you get compensated for your reserve of knowledge and your gifts, your skills, and your talents that you develop. And if you're not going to grow your reserve of knowledge and develop your gifts, your skills, and your talents in college to do something that's going to earn you a significantly more amount of money than with no degree, then there's just no reason to go to school. Better, better watching YouTube videos and grow your reserve of knowledge there. Mm, could be. And going back into the students, you also have students that change their majors. So now you're adding more to the student loan, the student debt. And I've known a few people that have to stay another extra year or two because they changed their major and they have to pull, take out another loan. So to them, that's overwhelming because like they start one major and they think they like it. But once they're into the classes, they don't like it. So now they got to change it. And when you go to the guidance counselor or you go to the PAC mentor, they tell you, hey, you got to spend another year or two. And now you got to go back into the financial aid to see if they cover for you. If not, you have to take another loan. And that's difficult too so you have students that know what they want when they go to college and then you have others that sometimes change and then the loan can get a little more bigger so it definitely sucks loans i honestly i don't know if other people would agree with me but i feel like college shouldn't be so expensive you know we're high school is not we don't pay for high school i remember for a public high school you don't have to pay for it if you went to a Catholic school, you had to pay so much money. I went to a Catholic high school. I thousands of dollars my parents spent for four years. And the education that I learned, that I got from that school, to be honest, wasn't really worth it compared to my brother. who was, He went to a public school and the classes they offered were like classes to, what was it, cooking classes, um, what other classes it was just like fun elective classes that catholic schools do not have and i remember he went to engineering school because he wanted to do engineering and he took engineering classes in high school you didn't have to wait until college but he took the classes in high school and then he decided okay i don't want to do this major so i feel like in high school sometimes classes like this help us to figure out what we want to do in college so when he went to college he knew he wanted to account so like college prep classes correct and most, usually all the Catholic schools do not have that. 
So I spent thousands of dollars and I know friends that spent thousands of dollars to go to school. They will go uh, away for one year in college. They don't like it, spent, take out a big loan because of the dorm, come back the next year and say, I, it's not for me. The amount of loan that I took out just to dorm and other things, imagine four years, I can't do it. So they come back and you know, it's like, damn. The other thing you got to consider is, especially like Ivy League schools or the school where I went, the School of Construction Management at FIU, is the social circle, the people and the connections that you make in school. And so the job I ended up getting at, at Syntex Rooney that I, I wrote about in my second book, Mastering Yourself, this sweet book here, which you can read for free at understandingrelationships.com. But the my scheduling manager that i had which was a primavera project planager it's primavera project planning so it was a, a scheduling program that we use in the construction industry i don't know if they still use it today but where you schedule everything of a building and so you follow that construction schedule like how, how many days or weeks you're going to be digging in the dirt and roughing in your plumbing and your electrical all the stuff that goes underground and then your your footings and your pilings and all that stuff and then your walls your your columns your tie beams tie columns all that stuff you you factor all that in because each one of them based on the plans takes a certain amount of time and so that the guy i had for scheduling he uh he worked at syntax rooney ran their scheduling department for all of their projects the marketing manager for syntax rooney also taught at fiu part-time i got to know him the ceo of the company um, I went to his son. Uh, he and I actually became friends because we had a bunch of classes together. He was a cool guy. And because those three or four connections that I made, it made it pretty easy to get a job at Rooney because I, I knew people at the top level of management. And like even Jocelyn, she got a job at one of the local news networks part time as well. And she got that job through one of her professors who used to work at that particular news station it was like so that was a connection that she also made at fiu and so that's another thing another benefit of going to a college somewhere is the connections that you're going to make and but these are all things you got to factor in and you got to contemplate and consider if you're going to spend the money and the time to go to school or go to college to get a degree four years for a degree or how many years it can take five six seven years I mean, college is definitely worth it, getting a degree. You say the connections. I have definitely have connections from my undergrad with my professor. Well, that's how you get this job with connection. <laughs> definitely got this connection. And um, obviously, connections, networking is what really gets you out there. That's what I've learned, especially for communications. And um, Miami is a great place to network. The University of Miami, my college, master that when that I went for my master's has a big list of connections with um, bigger companies for example in media Telemundo was one of them so things like that it helps us give us like a breather saying like okay after I finish my school year I finish graduating I might have something with the help of my school so, These are all things you got to weigh if you're going to sign the dotted line and spend that money. Is like, what, what am I getting out of this? Yeah, I'm spending all my money, but what are they going to do for me? Am I getting connections? Are they going to help me get a job that's going to pay well? Am I going to actually resources. learn stuff that's going to help me earn a good living? There's definitely resources on campus. I know every school is different, but from previous um, fr friends that I have, when they talk about how their school handles their connections, and especially mine, I try to compare it. They have offices that you can come in, they help you out. I remember looking for this job, it was on Handshake, literally through University of Miami. It's an app they have, and they post different jobs, internships, and that's how I found out about this job. So I definitely have to thank them because I don't think I will be able to find this job in another media or in, in the internet because I didn't find this. It was just through my school. So I do agree once you make that official commitment to go to school of course yeah, it's like, not I easy i like hiring smart people uh, one of the girls that works for me who you guys haven't met she works behind the scenes she was a valedictorian of her class in high school really super smart smarter than me and jen combined so 
And it's nice to have smart people because you can tell them things once and they just get it. They do it right. 